Hi, I'm Chad, and this is a sample video tutorial from my online InDesign course that has over 13 hours of helpful instruction. In this complete guide to InDesign, you'll design a poster, a lookbook, an annual report, and much more as you master InDesign. Check out the link in the description for more information. Thanks! When we're creating publications in InDesign, sometimes we'll want to have some kind of elements on all of the pages, or at least many pages. So instead of having to insert them one at a time on the various pages, we can use what's called master pages. If you see up on the pages panel where it says a master, go ahead and double click on that. And this is the master page. So if I, for example, just click out a shape here and I add some kind of color to it, you'll see it now shows up on every single left side page in the entire document. And then the same thing if I just alt click this one with the selection tool and then now they show on the right hand side as well. So this one's not very practical because we probably do not want just some rectangle in the middle of all of the design. We could set that as the background of course. We could click and drag around the entire area to the bleed and make that the background on the entire layout. And we can also, for example, add page numbers that are automatically updated, which we'll be doing in this lesson. So let's go ahead and add page numbers to this A master. And so I'm going to navigate down to the bottom here and I'm just going to click and drag the rectangle out just for a background for this, something like that. I'm actually going to go all the way to the bleed in case we're printing this and the printer cuts the paper you know, right here instead of right along the page border. We'll still have, for the fill here, Let's double click on that. Instead of just selecting a color from here, we'll be talking about color more in detail later. But for now, let's actually use a swatch instead. So click the swatches panel. And then up here where it says new color swatch. So click on that top right hand corner. New color swatch. And then click here under CMYK and go down to Pantone CMYK coded. And for this one, Pantone P116-8C. You don't have to use this specific one. I'm just showing you how to add a swatch to our library. I'm gonna click add, and we can select a couple other colors if we want and click add before we close this out. All right, so I'm gonna click done, and I have a couple in my library and CC libraries here. So I'm actually going to set this one here to this one we selected earlier, and I'm aligning it right along the left here, this margin, and then also the bottom margin here. Now I want the same exact thing on the other side. So an easy way to do that, since it's aligning right along this margin, I'm just going to hold Alt on the PC or Option on the Mac, click and drag it over, and hold Shift to keep it level, or we can just make sure it's along the bottom of the margin there. And then there we go. And now let's go ahead and add our page numbers. So in order to add the page number, we need to select the Type tool. and I don't want to just click over this because then it will embed it in there. I want to make it a separate text frame. So click and drag. And we don't enter in the actual page number here. For example, I don't just press 4, for example, and then put it on top of that and then expect that to work. Because now when I just go to page 4, sure, that's page 4, but then page 6 also says page 4. So back on the A master, what we need to do instead select that and we need to go to type and then insert special character markers and then current page number and there's the shortcut there so now it says a and that's fine i'm going to make this a little bit larger in this example and instead of the serif font i should go and use this one here so choose whichever font that looks good and so we've got this one here i'm actually going to click over it and change it to Let's go to swatches. I'm going to set that to paper or white. And then I'm actually going to click and drag that over here. Alt click and drag it. Or option click and drag. And then if we want it perfectly centered over this, we can just put that right along the edge there. And then I'm going to select it, that, and then just center it up here on the control panel pretty quickly. It's one way to do that. And same thing with this one, center that there. There we go. And if we can't tell if these are aligned, we could pull a guide down like that and align them with each other. So I'll just make sure it's a spread guide like that. So I'm gonna click this one, this one's slightly off. We can also use the control panel, change the location up there, but using a guide is pretty easy there. So I'm actually gonna pull that guide off there and see what we have. 
So I have pages. So if I go to page two, there's page two. Page four, there's page four. Page six, seven, eight, nine, and so on. All right, so that works. If I press W, you'll see what it looks like on our actual lookbook there once we print it. Now it is really close to the edge. Uh, some people might say we need to move it up a little bit inside the margin. We could do that, but I'm actually going to create a digital interactive PDF with this, but we can also create a print version because I've added those bleeds there as well, just to show how we would print this out as well. So it really depends on where we're distributing it. Now let's say we're on page one though, the cover. We don't want the page number on page one, right? Sometimes in magazines on pages that have advertisements, they don't have page numbers, and maybe a photo gallery might not. There's not always a page number on every single page. How do we get rid of that? Well, we'll go over how to manually override master page elements, because if I just click it here, it won't let me select it, right? Because it's a master page element. What I need to do is go to page one, and I can right click over it, and go to apply master to pages, and then go to none and that will apply master page none to page one. And then now that's that default master page up there that just has no content on it. But let's say we had a photo gallery where we did want a different kind of heading up at the top, for example. How would we do that? Well, we'll click right here, go new master, and it can be called B, that's fine, or we can call it photo gallery just so we know and we can base it on specific ones I'll just have it based on none and then click OK and then now it shows up here B photo gallery so on this one if I added some elements for example rectangle tool and let's just say every photo gallery page had some kind of color some kind of rectangle up here that had a color to it. I'm gonna to go to the libraries and just, I'll just apply that one there. Instead of having to apply this style to say eight pages of a photo gallery, what we could do if we wanted to add this is go to the pages panel. Let's just say the photo gallery was 10 through 15. We could just click and then click. And then another way besides right clicking, we can also up at the top right hand corner, click that and go apply master to pages and then it says 10 to 15 that's the range we want to apply it to and then b photo gallery click ok so we can have multiple master pages page one we have none master page the other pages we have the a master master page and then these would be photo gallery they don't have page numbers i'm actually going to undo that by pressing Control z on the pc or command z on the mac just want to show you how to add multiple master pages so we should have the page numbers on all the pages by default, except page one, which is the cover, and also page 16. We don't need a number on that because that will be the back cover. So another way is click and drag this none down to page 16. That's a third way to apply a master page to a page or spread. So I'm gonna click that, click and drag that over, and that applies it. So that's the quickest way to apply a master page styling to a specific page or spread. Now how do we select master page elements? Let's say on this example we wanted to change the color of that background for some reason. Let's say it didn't match really the layout of a feature story or a photo gallery or whatever. We can't select it, right? It's a master page element and we're on a regular spread. We actually can though, but we have to hold certain keys down. It's Control shift on the PC or Command shift on the Mac and then click and then that lets us select something. So now I can change this color if I want to something else because I added these to our swatches. They're not showing up here up at the top. I'll change it to that. And you'll notice this is actually covering up the page number now. So if I press Control Shift left bracket, that'll send it to back. So it's behind that page number. That's how we override master page elements on specific pages if we need to. We just Control Shift or Command Shift click them and then we can move them around or adjust them. Now what if we don't want to do that? What if we change it by accident or we change it and we're like, you know what, we need actually that to be consistent. We can click in the top right hand corner, the pages panel. I'm gonna bring this over so we can see it better. Click that there and then navigate down to master pages and then go to remove all local overrides. So it's right here, remove all local overrides. So if I click that, now we don't have that override 
for that page. So that's how we add master pages. We will be revisiting this to add a couple more elements to master pages in this course, but I want to give a brief overview and go ahead and add the page numbers for the lookbook. We can delete the second master page by just clicking it in the trash can because for now we just need the none and then the A master that has the page numbers on it. Thanks and I'll see you in the next lesson. Hi, I'm Chad and this is a sample video tutorial from my online InDesign course that has over 13 hours of helpful instruction. In this complete guide to InDesign, you'll design a poster, a lookbook, an annual report, and much more as you master InDesign. Check out the link in the description for more information. Thanks.